So I kind of wanted to cover more of your story. So if you can just give like a quick background of who you are and what you do right now, and then we can start from kind of like the beginning. All right. Well, um, right now I am the top person in my chosen field, which is numerology and astrology. It got damn near a billion views on TikTok and all those other IG programs in the past nine, 10 months. I only started this year. Um, I've been at this for about two decades. And what I basically promote is very simple, the truth. Now, most people can say that, but my, my stuff is the universal truth because mine is mathematics. And mathematics, in my opinion, is God's language. So that's basically what I do. I help people interpret numerology, which is basically a way to decode exactly what someone's personality is, what they're going to be uh, doing in life, if they're going to be successful, if they're going to have money, they're going to have a successful marriage. Things like that can be told by numerology and astrology because I believe this is all virtual reality. And then in the day, in the virtual reality, you have to have cheat codes, just like in video games. Nice. And those cheat codes are numerology and astrology. So you've been in Miami for this year, but before that, you were living in Ohio. Where were you born and how did you end up in Ohio? Um, I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, that's, I mean, it's, you know, a decent sized city. Uh, it's a Midwest rust belt, hardworking town. You know, the, the, it's far from Miami. People over there are making, you know, minimal wage to an average job, uh, in Cleveland. If you're making like, you know, 60,000 a year, you can make it and you could probably live a decent life. In Miami, you can't do that in 100K. So, you know, the cost of living is very low and um, just hardworking people there. Uh, ordinary, hardworking people. Not too many people, uh, you know, come from Ohio and get famous. We have a lot of presidents, though. So a lot of geniuses come from Ohio. But um, with the exception of maybe Logan Paul and the Paul brothers, uh, not too many people have, uh, came from Ohio or mainstream. Did you grow up with two parents? Yes, of course. And, and, and that's why I always tell people, that's why I'm privileged. Not because of this skin color, not because I'm Jewish, if anything, that held me back. Um, I'm privileged because I had two parents, and that is a privilege that most people in society today don't have. And the neighborhood that you grew up in, was it like a nicer I neighborhood? I would say lower middle class. Like, you know, I didn't go hungry, but, you know, we definitely were not middle class. You know, I had cockroaches growing through my toys and stuff like that. You know, it was normal. Me, the toys and cockroaches. But, you know, uh, my dad came from uh, the Soviet Union, again, modern day Russia, and he got here in the 70s. He basically got out of communist Russia and he made sure his kids were born in this country. And because they were born in this country, I had the opportunity that I would not have had in the other countries to actually make something of myself. And I'm um, thank, thankful that uh, he went all that way to help out his sons. And I can only be um, appreciative if I actually show the same type of gratitude to my sons. Pass it down. And were you raised in any type of religion, spirituality? Any type uh, of like my, my dad would uh, occasionally take me to the temple. Um, but we're not really one of those uh, families that don't, you know, take phone calls on Saturdays and don't use like, you know, we're not doing anything like that. My dad definitely uh, thought Jews were superior than most. I'm not sure if I have the same viewpoint, but I will say this. I think Jews are extremely intelligent. If you compare them to the rest of society, I don't care how that sounds. Then it's say better, but very intelligent. Um, when you it was not very religious, but he would definitely would tell me about God. And, you know, I remember my dad used to tell me, you know, I can't prove it, but I think there's a, like a secret group of men who are running this world from behind the scenes. That's what he told me way, way decades ago. And it turned out he was right. And when it comes to like public schooling, regular education, did you enjoy it? Did you perform well? Did you uh, no, I actually, I actually did not perform well in uh, public schools. I thought the teachers were trying to dumb me down. Example, like in fourth and fifth grade, 
I remember they used to always tell me, show your math work, show your, you know, multiplication, show your division, show all that stuff. I can do that stuff in my head. Why do I need to slow this stuff down? And I remember they failed me. I got all their answers right, but I didn't show my work. So they're trying to say I copied. So I stayed after school. They gave me the same test. I didn't show the work and I got all the answers right again. And at that point, I realized the public school system is there to hold down people. Why would they want someone who's operating at a higher level, at a higher frequency to come down? Why would they not encourage that type of behavior? So uh, again, I was very young uh, when I realized that. I mean, I mean, even when I was 13, I remember watching Bill Clinton lie to the American people. And, you know, look at this. I was always watching the State of the Union at 13, 14. Other kids are playing video games. I'm looking at this guy. I'm like, wow, this guy's a really good liar. And other people got to know he's lying too, but, you know, up and down, up and down the applause. So, you know, even he taught me something that if you're really, really good at something and you can't really show anything, you can be a politician and just lie. You know, they called him Slick Willie. I've heard the term, (laughs) but I never knew what it meant. Yeah, yeah. It is what it is. Um, Bill Clinton is the bastard child of uh, the Rockefellers. And that's why he keeps losing to Obama, who's connected with the Rothschilds. And Rothschilds here, Rockefellers here. And if you don't know how that works, in 2000, when Chase Manhattan merged with JP Morgan, that was basically the Rockefellers bending the knee to the Rothschilds because that was the Rockefellers bank and they merged and then became Chase which is the Rothschilds Bank. So again, you got to know these people who run the world, they're like gangsters, right? And they'll fight amongst themselves. But if anyone tries to damage their core game, oh, they're coming for you. They all come together and then they hire at you. When was the first time that you came across any type of astrology, numerology, and did it pique your interest? Chinese restaurant. <laughs> what age? Oh, fuck, dude. Um, I can't. I don't remember the age, but I remember knowing I'm a Capricorn and liking it. Didn't know why. I know I liked it. And as I studied, you know, uh, further, and you know, as I got older, I remember a lot of Roman history was one of my first loves, and a lot of Roman emperors who happened to be Capricorns put Capricorn in the back of the money. So, you know, it, it, it tells you something, you know, some people are very proud of uh, their skin color, even though they had nothing to do with it. Some people are very proud of having daddy's money, even though they had nothing to do with it. Some people are proud of their astrology sign. Voila. And when did you start to delve deeper into researching this stuff and understanding? 9-11. 9-11, by far. Uh, before that, eh, you know, I knew I knew enough not to trust the government. I knew that much, uh, but I didn't think anything of you know McDonald's having a big M and them symbolizing the big M. I didn't think that was a big deal. Why would I? Or Marathon gas station or M and M's candy? You know, I didn't think that was a big deal. Why would I? As I you know started looking into numerology, I understood that M is thirteen. And that signifies homage to the 13 bloodline Illuminati families. It's all over the place. Go on your computers and put in all the movies that start with 13. 13 Warriors, 13 Ghosts. It's like fucking 30 of them. Then start uh, looking at Ladder 49 or Six Days, Seven Nights. You know, this shit's a joke. I already mentioned the sports teams, the 76ers, 7-6, 13, 49ers. So it's all over if you look at it. And the system that's always in the court system, always in religion, always in astrology, it's all the same. It's 12 plus one. 12 jurors, one judge, legally. Religious. Jesus, 12 apostles. Astrology, sun, 12 signs. Come on. It's everywhere. What do you think? This is a coincidence? And, and, and if you understand, if you have enough up here, which I don't think you have to have much, but if you have enough up here to understand this is not a coincidence, 
that tells you people who know a lot more than you, if you're going to be honest with yourself, are actually using this stuff. Start asking yourself why, start getting curious, and then things might start coming together for you. At this point, 2001, you were already an adult. What were you doing kind of to sustain yourself at this point from, you know, the point of 18 to when you started? Uh, I used to go to auctions and buy four Tauruses for $300 and then flip them for 1000 to 1500 I did stuff like that. Um, I remember every Thursday to Airy, Pennsylvania, and I'd dig up, you know, like, you know, $3,000. And I'd be good. And I'd take some of my friends out there with me so they can help me drive the cars back. You know, make a quick lick here and there. Sustain myself. Uh, sold marijuana. It is what it is. Never any drugs because marijuana is not a drug. And remember, in the year 2023, now the government is allowing people to sell marijuana because they can put their tax on it. Back then, they weren't so evolved. They didn't figure out they can make more, more money off taxes than they could actually arresting people and getting money and fines. So I lived in an era where they used to arrest you for smoking weed. They would arrest you for anything. Now, have I ever been arrested for selling weed? Hell no. They never got me because I'm a numerologist. As a numerologist, I knew what day is not the hustle. <laughs> All right. So four is the number of law and order, okay? I was so on it that if someone had a four in their fucking license plate, peace, I ain't going with you. Because you have a higher chance of getting pulled over, and I kid you not, that shit saved me at least three trips to jail. Doing stuff like that. Oh, wait a second. Uh, what's your birthday? Oh, you're in your enemy year? Nah, dog, I ain't getting in the car with you. I'm sorry if you find that shit offensive. I don't give a fuck. People thought I was fucking crazy. I'm like, you for real, dude? I'm like, yeah, I'm for real. They thought I was kidding. They thought this was all like some kind of joke and shit. No, I'm for real. And then you should have heard the laughs in 2001, 2002, when people said, there is no way you're ever going to make a living off this shit. Because I told people I'm going to make a living off this. And they said, you're fucking crazy. And I still remember the way they laughed. The funny part is some of those people who were laughing back then are asking me for money now. So you never even decided to take the path of nine to five, regular job, company. That, that was I mean, I had, I had jobs like that. Worked at a gas station when I was younger. Uh, Charlie Sub, I mean, when I was really young. Um, but no, that shit wasn't for me, man. I was more of the type, well, I want to be a capitalist, invest, and take money out. That's how capitalism works. Like, for instance, I would buy a car for 300 350 No kidding you. 20 years ago, you could buy a running car that that had at least 20,000, 30,000 miles left and a, a four tours that was born like 1993, four tours. You could buy that shit for three, 400 pay some taxes, 500 and then sell that shit for fifteen hundred. And back then, a thousand bucks was money. You could sustain, you could literally sustain yourself with fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, fifteen, fourteen hundred dollars in two thousand one, two thousand two. So again, you know, make enough money, and I just basically studied for about three, four years. I remember I used to joke with people that I spent more money in books than they did on drugs. So I used to buy books and books, and that was a mistake. I'm going to admit, that was a mistake. Why? The reason that was a mistake is because these people who writ wrote the books, they just copied and pasted from someone else. They had no actual evidence what they believe in. There's no factual evidence. Like, for instance, when people say, what does Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant have in common? I can say they're both 11s. I can say Michael Jordan, 217, 1963, adds up to 29, 2 and 9 is 11. I see uh, Kobe's born, 823, 1978, adds up to 38, 3 and 8. I can say that's what they have in common. They both have that killer instinct. These people can't do that. There's no correlation. It's basically, trust me. Oh, when this is an alignment, trust me. I, I, I didn't even trust my fucking self. I'm the own biggest skeptic at this. That's why I can convince so many people because I'm the biggest skeptic there is. Show me this shit works. And I don't believe it has to be perfect. 
Now, the reason it's imperfect is because the practitioner is wrong, including me. I'm the best in the world at it, but even Steph Curry misses free throws sometimes. So again, it's the practitioner who fucks up. It's not has nothing to do with the basketball itself. So the system itself is probably 99.9999% perfect. Nothing's 100%, but if you notice, 99.99 mirrors itself. Boom, 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 boom. So it's like a never-ending story. So uh, I believe this is the closest thing to perfection there is. And when someone shows me a better system, I'll follow them. Haven't seen it yet. Don't tell me about your Bible, your Quran, your Torah. I ain't trying to hear about that, man. Uh, you're not, most people who are into religion, they try to prove the um, Bible with what is in the Bible. <laughs> no, dude, I don't think so. You it, it, Prove the Bible is real with stuff outside the Bible. Not inside. Same thing with the Quran. Same thing with uh, the Torah. At least the Quran hasn't been rewritten like a thousand times. So it is what it is. Because I wanted to ask you that question because 2000, now there's more of a movement where people are like, yo, don't go to college or don't take the traditional path. It's kind of become a marketing scheme. But back then, people were looking at you crazy. They're either like, yo, are you going to the military? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Destined to Not to mention I had a felony on me. I hit a cop. Uh, what was the story behind that? Um, they came to my house and they knocked real fucking loud. I felt disrespected. I didn't, you know, because I was, you know, kind of sleeping and shit. I'm like, who the fuck is knocking on my door like that? I fucking opened and just fucking started swinging. And um, that dude, he took an L. The problem is the four people were with them plus the dog because they came for a warrant. Um, you know, they, they kind of whooped my ass pretty well. And, uh, I always tell people if I ever run for president, when I run for president, um, I'll turn a negative into a positive and I'll make sure that a uh, police record from 98, uh, gets me half the black vote. That's a good one. So when did you start feeling like, okay, I've got a handle of this numerology stuff and getting your first people to pay you for what you're doing. So what I would do first is um, about 2002, because I was really just practicing 2001. 2002, I would really start going up to people. Yo, what's your birthday? And I just start spitting. Is this real? Is this real? Is this real? And then when I went up to at least a thousand people and I started getting the hang of this, I'm like, okay, so this fits with this person. This fits with this person. And then I was able to distinguish how to add energies because it's not just numerology, it's astrology because all the numerologists were just doing numerology. All the astrologers were just doing astrology. I merged. No one did that before. That's why I'm the, like the first one up here. I merged the two. And I'm not big enough to take over astrology. No one ever said I was. I might be a big name in astrology, but there's so many fucking astrologers. Most of them are fraudulent women who've been divorced three times. They're going to sell you matchmaking advice. But when it comes down to it, you know, isn't it funny that this is a woman's game, numerology and astrology? But it took a man to make it famous. <laughs> you bras couldn't even do that right. Just think about it. If you think of famous psychics, who do you think of? Nostradamus? Yeah. Rasputin? Gary the Numbers guy? I, I, don't, I, I, I can't think of any other women. But again, you guys are filled with this stuff. The problem with women who do this stuff is the same thing in life. They have no accountability. I'll give you an example. I was talking to one uh, female astrologer, and she said she was doing a wedding. And she told me about this woman, how this woman's uh, Venus was in this, her Jupiter was in this, uh, everything about her. And then after 20 minutes... I've listened to this complete nonsense. You know, I'm, I'm trying not to fall asleep. I asked her, what about the man? And I kid you not. She's like, oh, and then you think about that. So she's doing matchmaking advice, but she's just looking at it from one person's perspective. That's so asinine. Um, you know, the other thing I noticed coming up in numerology and astrology, because after 2001, I started practicing more on people. 2002... I, 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 no, that's 2002. I was practicing more on people. I started buying a lot of books. And by the end of 2002, I realized there's something here. There's something really here, but 
it's not in the books. This is garbage. Because I see some shit is matching, and it's the shit I just noticed by myself. But the stuff that's in the books is not matching. So I made the decision after a year, pretty much into this, we're throwing the books away. Then I went to the so-called Grand Masters of the day. Whew. People who are in there for like 40, 50 years, 60, 70, you know, year old people. And, you know, they would spit some game. Not very charismatic. I understand why they didn't blow up. Um, you know, had some knowledge, no doubt. But I'm looking at them. And just one thing keeps coming in the back of my head. Because I'm young. And I, I, I want to know these things. If you're so good at what you do, why the fuck are you broke? That's the same. I keep going back to that. And then I'm thinking, well, well, wait a second. Maybe they're just on a spiritual path and money doesn't mean anything to them. Because that's the answer most of these people will give you anyway. But then as you start thinking about it more and more, you start understanding, well, wait a second. Yeah, spirituality matters. Having a strong family matters. Having healthy kids matters. But we live on a materialistic plane. Am, am I wrong? This is a materialistic plane, right? Yeah. So to basically say all materialism is evil, that's a mistake. No poor man ever changed the world while he was alive. A couple pulled it off when they were dead. Jesus, a few others. But no one ever pulled that off when you were alive. So what that basically tells me is you have to have balance. It's like that eight, turn it 90 degrees, infinity. But infinity is about balance, the spiritual and the material. And what I realized was these people were frauds. Because if you're going to be telling people, yo, if you open a business on this day, you're going to make money, but you're broke yourself, I don't give a fuck what your excuse is. You're a fraud. Done. Last case was a woman named Allison. And I, I, I told you, Allison, I told you 10 years ago, any chance I get to shit on you, I will. Any chance I get to destroy your legacy, I will. Because remember I, when I told you a decade ago, I was going to be the one to make numerology mainstream. Not you, bitch. So again, I promised you, I promised I'd never forget you, I keep my word. <laughs> this broad, she was at her for, I don't know, like 40 years, three divorces, right? Wow. And <laughs> I remember I asked her two things. First, I asked her, Allison, ace the number of money, right? She's like, yeah. I'm like, why do you, don't you price your products in eights? Why is it $25? Why is it $50? Why isn't it 53? Why isn't it 80? 45 seconds. Silence. After that, she tells me, oh, I never thought about that. <laughs> really? The same thing I basically made famous in the past 10 years. Now everyone's pressing their products and eights. I mean, you've seen it. Yeah. Even people who say they don't believe in this are pressing all their products and eights or paying people on the 28th. Hi, War Room. Hi, Andrew Tate. Tell people why you're paying people on the 28th. Tell them it's a lucky number. Why don't you? Again, a lot of people are doing it, but going back to her, she said she never thought about it. I'm like, whoa, I'm talking to the wrong person. I'm literally talking to the wrong person. Afterwards, I confronted her one time because I was getting sick of this shit. She asked me to promote one of her books. I'm like, man, this is garbage. I'm like, fine, I'll promote your book. Answer one question to me. You've been divorced three times. Don't you think it's fraudulent for you to sell matchmaking advice? Her exact words were, I'm experienced at it. Really? And then when I pressed her, she said, I hate women. No accountability. No nothing. At that point... I cut everyone off. I'm doing this by myself. And the game plan was very simple. There's no social media. There's no internet at the time. See, you kids have it easy. I'm not saying it's easy to get into social media, but I mean, in all honesty, I'm like, what? In my 40s, I got a billion views, got a quarter million on IG, 
Got almost a million on, on uh, TikTok, almost 100K on Twitter. And I did that pretty much all within a year. So don't say it's not possible. But it's a lot easier than what it was back in the day. There's no internet. There's no Facebook. You know, there's, there's, or if it was, it was in imminent stages and nothing you could really do with it. And I remember I figured out the only game plan I had was to call in to talk radio shows and start spitting game. And, you know, first year I do this, a lot of this. You're a what? Numerologist, click. You know, they don't even want want to talk about it at all. Eventually, I got on some radio stations, and I was pretty good at this. Spitting game, people thought I was crazy, but I'm interesting. And I hooked up with a guy in Cleveland by the name of Mike Trevisano. If there is one person who helped me off a little bit in life, it's him. Uh, who wasn't related or something like that. And Mike had the number one talk show in Ohio. It was a 50,000-watt radio station, which means half the country could listen to it. Even though it was a radio station in Cleveland, the signal was that powerful. You know, nowadays with the internet, you can listen to anything you want. But back then, it was just radio. So people could uh, listen from half the nation. And the thing about Mike was he was lazy. He really didn't want to, you know, do work. You know, he's an old man, wants to gamble all day. That's all he talked about, just playing cards. Every day he had some fucking people his cards, house playing cards when it was illegal to gamble for money. But, you know, he's a superstar. He can get away with it. Eventually, um, he figured out that he didn't need to do prep work if he just called me in. Because if you call me in, I, I, I'm good enough to talk for about two hours there's commercial breaks. The shit's easy, man. I'm good content. Whether you love me or hate me, I'm good content. So this guy literally had me on for years. Wow. Years. I was so recognized that internet radio stations were giving me jobs. Oh, you go on Triv? Oh, you're that dude? Just giving me jobs on internet radio. Paying me to fucking talk. This is 2008, 2009. I used to go to restaurants and people would pay like about 200 bucks. Remember, it's long, like decades ago. They get a lunch and a reading with me. And I'd just sit there for like five hours to give readings to about 40 people. And they promote this shit through the radio station. So I'm already starting to make a little bit of bread off this in 2009. Um, in 2007, we'll backtrack a little bit. Um, Still broke at that time, but, you know, I got a little bit, got a name at least. Everyone in the city knows who I am. It was LeBron James, a couple politicians, and then me. And I decided, uh, let's go after all the sports teams. I got the, you know, bullhorn. Let's do it. Because that radio station, WTM 1100, where Mike Trevisano worked, it was the flagship station for the Browns, the Cavs, and the Indians, all the Cleveland baseball teams. And the Indians are what they call used to call the Guardians. Now it's politically correct. I still call them the Indians, though. So I went after all those teams, and I basically went to their offices, insulted them on the radio. The guy got a following, so people... And this guy wants me to talk shit because <laughs> it gets him a following and stuff. So it got to the point, I start first with the Browns, I have I I remember I'm downtown Cleveland. I get a phone call, and he's like, "Son, my name is Lou Marletti. Do you know who I am?" I'm like, damn, that's a cocky motherfucker. I'm like, no. He's like, Google me. I'll call you back. What the fuck is this mafioso motherfucker? Right? I Google Lou Marletti, as I'm sure you guys are doing right now. Former head of the Secret Service under Bill Clinton. Now a vice president for the Cleveland Browns. Fuck. Calls me back. Take some bass out of my voice that time. <laughs> and he's like, son, uh, Cleveland uh, Browns don't want anything to do with you. I'm like, listen, I think you guys need to draft Adrian Peterson, born 321, 1985, because I think he's next Jim Brown. Now, do you know who Adrian Peterson is? No. Okay. Adrian Peterson turned out to be a Hall of Famer. He turned out to be one of the best running backs in NFL 
history, not just for a couple of years, history. And they put a restraining order on me because I told them to draft that guy. <laughs> How insistent were you on the draft? Very, very. Emails a couple times a day. I, I, I gave people readings to get their emails because no one believed I could do this. And as soon as I did, they would just give me. I remember um, Michael Savage. Uh, Phil Savage was his name. Phil Savage was the GM's name. And I got to a secretary. Someone gave me a secretary's number. And I'm like, I need to talk to Phil Savage. And she's like, who are you? I'm like, I'm Gary, the numbers guy from the trip show. She's like, oh, I heard about you. She's like, it wasn't good things. I'm like, give me your birthday. And if I'm not, if I can't nail you, hang up. I will never call again. She gave me her birthday. I did my thing. She gave me Phil Savage's email. I started emailing this guy. The problem with him, he was a priest, evangelical priest, and this is satanic to him. Yeah. In the end, I got uh, basically restraining order off Cleveland Brown Stadium for a couple of years. So that's how that one ended. Oh, for one. Next, Cleveland Cavaliers. I was talking to uh, a guy by the name of Mr. Winger. Yeah, I, I, I promised I'd make you too famous too, motherfucker. I don't know where this uh, motherfucker is right now, but m me and him came to an arrangement. He's like, prove numerology and astrology work. I'm like, okay. There's going to be three players who are going to be injured. Joe Johnson, Jason Kidd, and then Gilbert Arenas. Can you look up Gilbert Arenas on your phone real quick? See what happened? This is 2007. Go, on, go to him on Wikipedia. So after Joe Johnson gets hurt, I email Mr. Winger. I'm like, is this enough? He's like, no, that's only one out of three. And then Jason Kidd gets injured. I email Mr. Winger. Mr. Winger says, this is not enough proof. This is only two out of three. I'm like, God damn, motherfucker. I just gave you the list last month and two already hit. And Gilbert Arenas, if you're watching this, man. He and, tore his MCL. Yes. There's nothing personal about this, but after Mr. Winger said two guys didn't mean anything, I went to Dan Gilbert, the owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers himself. I got emails to back all this shit up. And I said, the people in your pack are low IQ. What about the wolf himself? Because he has one of those sayings, the strength of the wolf is the pack and the strength of the pack is the wolf. So I basically insulted his pack. I'm like, what about the wolf? He emails me back. He's like, if Gilbert Arenas gets injured like you say he will, me and you going to do business. I believe it was 4-4-2007 when it happened. Is that right? Was it that day? 4-4-2007? against the... Washington Wizards. Uh, it was the Charlotte Bobcats. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And Gerald Wallace fell on his leg. So, Charlotte Bobcats, I believe so. It was in April. Yep, it, it was uh, 2007, April. And one of my buddies called me and said, Yo, Gilbert's done. I, again, nothing personal, Gilbert. I was celebrating. I thought I made it. I thought I made it. I had a deal with the billionaire owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers. If something happens... It was 4 4 Yes, it was 4 4 I, Again, I remember that day. It's like 9-11 to me because I, I, I thought that's the day I thought I made it. Yeah, right. Um, I asked Dan when we're going to meet. He doesn't answer. A month answer. It goes by. I'm like, yo, we had an arra arrangement. He sticks Howard Cross, head of Cleveland Cavs security, to make sure I don't bother anyone in the Cavs or anyone. I was pissed. Wait a second. I got everything right and I'm still fucking banned? Oh, by the way, they banned me from the arena too. I was pissed. I was so mad. I promise I get even with that guy. We'll get into that in a little bit. I promise they get even with that guy. Cleveland Indians were the only ones who were respectful. Mark Shapiro was the general manager of the time. 
Chris Antonetti was the uh, assistant GM. They were very respectful. Just couldn't close them. But at least they listened to me. So, again, uh, shout out to them. So, again, no one ever tried what I did in 2007. Failed, no doubt. But I got to the owners. I got to the GM. Got to all these people. Good learning experience that you can be fucking right and still lose. That was a good learning experience. Helped out a lot later in life. Flash forward 2010. I'm bigger than I ever was in Cleveland. Local celebrity. I'm on the Trevisano show. I say LeBron James is leaving Cleveland. I got a big name at that point. Like if I say something's happening, because I just called the stock market crash in 2008, 2009. I called all this stuff. People, when I say something, people pay attention. And this part, people can look up on YouTube, put in Gary the Numbers Guy, uh, Dan Gilbert. It'll come right up. And I'm just basically saying LeBron's gone. Guess who calls in the radio station? Dan Gilbert, owner of the Cavs. Starts with an insult. I'm like, okay, brother. Uh, He's gone. He's leaving. And he's like, he's not going anywhere. He's going to light it up like Las Vegas. That's what he kept saying. After LeBron left to the Miami Heat, (laughs) see a little trend of Cleveland going to Miami? I bet you have more influence to them than you, LeBron. Um, After that happened, Dan Gilbert was getting roasted. Absolutely roasted. Like everyone hated him because they know the Cavs are going to suck now. And I'm I'm going in on this guy. Uh-huh. See, the numerologist is better than the billionaire. I'm just going in. Get to my radio job. It was called Sports Talk Cleveland back then. Get uh, called into Belfie's office. He was the guy who ran it. Liberal fucking scumbag. But, you know, it is what it is. He used to tell me I should have more respect when I talk about Obama. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> give a fuck what you say. Well, anyways, he calls me in office. He's like, uh, I got good news and bad news. I'm like, all right. What's the good news? He's like, um, your ratings are wonderful. You know, you're the top guy here. I'm like, cool. What's the bad news? It's like, you're fired. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm like, what's, this isn't computing. He's like, um, the Cavs told him that if they want credentials to go to Cavs games as reporters, as press, because it's internet radio, they don't have to give it out back those back in those days. They had to fire me. It came straight from the top. So again, I'm right again. Billionaire fucking flexes on me and gets me fired. This guy doesn't okay. like him. No, he doesn't. I'm like, all right. So now I got no job. I got some clout in Cleveland, Ohio, which, trust me, isn't much. And um, still got a felony. And uh, this shit is not quite working. I need a new game plan. I can't do it in Cleveland. I could, you know, I'll, I'll make enough to survive, but I'll never do anything in Cleveland. 2011, I start going to the NBA Summer League. With my little pamphlets about how all NBA players add up to this. Uh, why certain players get injured all the time. Penny Hardaway's a seven. Grant Hill's a seven. Pass this stuff on. Most of these guys think I'm fucking nuts. You know, they, they're like, how'd you get in here? You know, shit like that. <laughs> and because I, I study this stuff. The NBA Summer League is the only place where you can come in contact with these players. In contact with these closest. Like, like this. You can come start talking to them. Can't do that in the NBA. Uh, I, I mean, can't do that in NFL. Can't do that in Major League Baseball. Can't do that anywhere else because there's a distance. But the NBA Summer League, everyone's close. So I decided to target that. A um, couple guys liked me. I started listening. But they were nobodies. They were like very low men on the total pole in the NBA. Well, those nobodies turned into somebodies in about 213. And without mentioning any names, um, people can figure out the, who the names are themselves. 
uh, in 2013, I saw that there was a team that was on the rise. They were called the Golden State Warriors. And uh, there was a kid named Steph Curry. You ever hear of him? Yeah. Yep. And Clay Thompson. Uh, and the reason I liked them so much was, and I really released this information, so I don't care, is because 7 and 11 are like soulmates. Those two numbers get along so fucking well together. I always recommend that 7s and 11s marry each other. And obviously, Steph is a 7 and Clay is an 11. So I saw that. I'm like, yo, this team's going to do something in the future. And there was a player who was on the Denver Nuggets, and he was about to go to Memphis. And I'm like, hell he is. He's the missing piece. I talked my guy, who basically is the head guy in his team, into going to Golden State. He talked to Jerry West, who's the logo of the NBA, who was the GM of the Golden State Warriors at the time. And based off my advice, he convinced him to get this player. This player who they got in 2015 ended up being the NBA MVP of the NBA Finals. They won the chip because of this dude. You know who they beat? Cleveland? <laughs> they beat the Cleveland Cavaliers. So the numerologist who was fired in 2010 from his radio job by the billionaire got his revenge five years later where he stripped the fucking Cleveland Cavaliers of the NBA title because if that guy, fuck, I'll say it, Andre Iguodala, doesn't sign with the Golden State Warriors in 213, if he does, he's not the NBA MVP in 215, and that dynasty never happens. And by the way, that's the same Golden State Warriors that beat the Cavs in 217, 218. I took three titles away from Dan Gilbert. Three titles away from LeBron James. Think about it this way. If it's not for me, LeBron James right now is called the GOAT. He's won four NBA titles. I took three away from him. He would have had seven. He would have had more than Michael Jordan. I am the exact reason LeBron James is not called the GOAT. And all started because Dan Gilbert got me fired from a radio job. But that's all I had back then. It's just interesting how things go full circle, don't they? And um, Mr. Gilbert is not going to respond to this because uh, he caught a stroke quite a while ago. Maybe it was because Golden State beat him. Who knows? And um, I don't think he's in any condition to do interviews anymore. At the end of the day, basically goes like this. Be careful who you step on. Never know how it's going to turn out in life. But one thing that you did that really I've met a couple of people that are associated with you and they told me that they kind of found out about you about this is 2016. Yes. 2016. So it, it's very interesting. In 2016. Because you have to understand, I'm traveling with the, with the Warriors at that time. When, when they're in the playoffs, I'm there with them. You know, do you know how cool it is going to NBA Finals and being courtside and, like, fucking shaking hands with all the fucking stars? Not yet. I, <laughs> you will. But, I mean, that, that shit's cool, and I did that until COVID hit. I literally did that until COVID hit. And then after COVID, new rules came into effect and couldn't do that anymore. But in the Golden State Warriors used to get me in everywhere. Even my hometown Cleveland Cavaliers didn't want me around because of Dan Gilbert. So in 216, it was tough. Because in 216, the numerology was telling me the Cavs are going to win the NBA Finals. And the Warriors are my boys. But, got to do what you got to do, right? So I went on the Cleveland radio station, channel 19, and people can look this up, Gary Numbers Guy Cavs, on YouTube. And I basically said the Cavs would come back from 3-1 down to win the NBA Finals because it's the best of seven. Now, and was no this before or after they were already down? No, they were down. They were down when I made this okay, comment. So they were already they down? Were, they were down. Okay. 
And I made this comment and it's never happened before. That's true. And um, I basically put my rep on it and it was the biggest upset in NBA history. Yeah, that, that, helped, that helped a lot in making me. But I want people to understand what I went through. I had to go against the team that I'm cool with. The team I've been like going to the finals with. I had to go against them for a team of the owner I hated. Still made the right call because that's what I saw in the numbers. And have I been wrong before? Hell yeah, I've been wrong. But not about the big boy things. Whenever I put, I remember the first time I put my rep on the line, it was uh, 2012. Yahoo Sports. They can look it up. Uh, Yahoo Sports, the post game, Gary the Numbers guy. And I said that uh, LeBron James would win his first title in 2012 against Oklahoma City. And Oklahoma City was up one nothing when the thing came out. So they were the underdogs, big time. Worked out. And that's how I started getting a little bit of a reputation in 212. Because I figured if you're going to spread numerology to the people, you have to dumb it down to them. And dumb it down to them means sports. Because that's what all these males want to talk about all the time, sports. So I brought it down to their level. And by the way, people who are in my position, people who are influencers, if people are too stupid to get you, that's not their problem. That's your problem. Because... You want to be the influencer. You want to get it to them. So you have to dumb it down in their language. And what I mean by dumb it down is sports, stocks, pop culture. You got to be able to put this in everything. And conspiracy. And that's the things I've done in life. And that's why I've succeeded at this and no one else has. But I spawned a whole bunch of copycats. Woo! All these NPCs are like, wow, Gary, now they're calling me the devil. All this good stuff because within a couple months, they figured it all out. <laughs> it, it, it's a joke, but I guess, you know, that's what happens. Whenever I knew what would happen. Um, one thing I will tell people is be careful where you get the information. If it's free, it's probably free for a reason. So can you, two things, can you give a brief, like you said, super dumbed down understanding of numerology and astrology? And then one more question is, how did you know those three people were going to get injured, Gilbert Arenas and the other two in 2007? Uh, what made get, you so sure? They were all in seven-year cycles in numerology and in seven-year cycles, people get injured. Very simple. Seven is, is the number of the mind, but the body does break down. Remember I said something about Penny Hardaway and Grand Hill being sevens. Well, people go through cycles and they were in that cycle seven. When people are in cycle seven, sometimes you're going to have health issues. So with sports players, it usually translates into injuries. With regular people like me and you, maybe a trip to the hospital, maybe an accident. And yes, you can see stuff like this. Happens once every nine years. So it, it's there. Um, what was the other question? The basic understanding okay. kind of like kicks off. Um, you know, this is something I've said so many times, but for God's sake, it's the best example there is. So 11 is a master number, 22 is a master number, 33 is a master number. And basically master numbers are revolving in a much higher frequency than one through nine. So what, and you're an 11, aren't you? Yeah. Maybe that has something to do with how you can just put your voice on there and get a whole bunch of followers and other people can't be in front of the camera and do the same thing. But, you know, that's a story for another day. Um, people who are 11s, they have a lot of charisma. Joe Rogan, born on the 11th, is not the top podcaster in the world. Number one. Um, the guy who lies and claims he's the top podcaster is uh, Logan Paul. And he's born 410, 1995, adds up to an 11. So there's a couple ways to come at this. If someone's born on an 11, 29, 2 and 9 is 11. Or if someone's like Logan Paul, adds up to an 11. 410, 1995, adds up to 29, 2, 9, 11. So again, if that's too slow for you, that's your problem. Because again, you're not slowing me down because you're slow. Rewind and do whatever you need to. So people with 11s 
have a lot of charisma. Um, there's a guy on kick. Who's the top guy on kick? Aiden Ross. He's born on the 11th. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. Kick starts with K. K is the 11th letter. So, again, I don't believe all any of this stuff is a coincidence. And, you know, another big name out there, Candace Owens. Someone who came from nowhere. Born on the 29th, 2 and 9 11. That's how she has the mouthpiece. Um, one person I consider the most charismatic of all time, Barack Obama. Born 4, 8, 19, 61, adds to the 29, 2 and 9 is 11. Barack Obama's name, 11 letters. He became president in 2009, 2009 adds up to an 11. What do you think? This shit's all a coincidence? Get the fuck out of here. So when I look at this stuff and I see constant patterns, Bill Clinton's an 11. You know, these are people, uh, Louis Farrakhan, ever hear him speak? Yeah. Very charismatic individual, correct? Absolutely. Born on the 11th. So again, you see constant patterns with this stuff. And then you see the way the elite use it. And the way the elite use it is they like to commit terrorist attacks on certain days. That's why 9-11 happened on the 11th. And the group that committed the terrorist attack, Al-Qaeda, why don't you look up on Wikipedia when Al-Qaeda was founded? And um, they committed the terrorist attack in America on the 11th. They did one in Madrid, Spain on March 11th. And they did one in India. On July 11th. 1988. What, what day? When was Al-Qaeda founded? Give you Osama idea. bin Laden. Born 1959. Year of the rooster. Gets eliminated. 2011. Year of the cat. Enemy signs. You see this stuff with everything. Do you find it? They don't give the exact date. Al-Qaeda was founded August 11th, 1988. So you have an organization founded on the 11th. There are three biggest attacks. Not all of them, but the three biggest ones all on the 11th. Remember something called Oklahoma City? Yeah. Oklahoma City happened in 419, 1995. 419, 19, 95. Add it all up, 11. So again, when I see stuff like this, and it's not just here in America. Yeah, I can point out that Nomar Gaddafi controlled Libya for over 40 years. He was born 6-7, 1942, 11. I could say Hosni Mubarak, the guy who ran Egypt, was an 11, 40 freaking years. I can say the Arab Spring was uh, found, uh, started in 2011. And the last guy they came after, Assad in Syria, born on 9-11. So you keep seeing people in positions of power currently and in the past. John F. Kennedy, born on the 29th. Two and nine, again, 11. You start seeing stuff like this, you start understanding this isn't the coincidence. People in positions of power are doing this on purpose. That's the only possible conclusion you can come to. So does numerology tie in with astrology? Is astrology more important yeah, No, than no, numerology? numerology supersedes astrology. I, I don't give a fuck what you astrologers say. I'll give you an example. Astrology, the signs are numbered. Gemini is the sign of communication. I'm sure you've heard that before. Yeah. Okay. Gem communication starts with C. C is the third letter. Gemini happens to be the third sign. If you understand that three is the number of communication, you already understand that Gemini is the sign of communication because the number goes before the sign itself. See, I'm educating you astrologers out there. Because remember, astrology is over here. Even though I use it, numerology over here. This will never change. It's like men and women. Men, on average, are always going to be stronger than women. It is what it is. So how much does nature can subvert, I guess you would say, the numbers? Because a lot of people will use, let's say, I don't like to use the word like racism, but they'll say, hey, this certain group of people are better at this or this certain group of people tend to, you know. Numerology shows you shouldn't be racist because sevens are the smartest. I don't care what you think about Mexicans or African-Americans. If they're sevens, they're most likely smarter than you. Doesn't matter what your race is, even gender. One of the reasons I got into numerology because I don't think much of women's intelligence. I don't really care how that sounds. 
I really don't. And when it came down to it, I noticed the women born on the 7th, 16th, 1 and 6th, 7th, 25th, 2 and 5th, or 7th, they're fucking smart. They're really smart. So numerology even supersedes gender. You know, um, most women billionaires got it divorcing somebody or got it from daddy. Not Sheryl Sandberg, born on the 28th, the number of wealth, CFO of Facebook. She did it herself. Not Jessica Alba. You remember her? Yeah, she Yeah, did. nice little pretty one. And back in the day, she made a lot of smart decisions because she's born on the 28th. She didn't need to divorce somebody. So again, those two broads born on the 28th made it without a man because the numerology supersedes the astrology. Numerology supersedes gender. It's always there. You know, when people say, Gary, prove this stuff works. Okay, let's go into finance. Apple, they all got the phones except me. I'm a Samsung guy. Um, but most people got apples. And Apple was founded April 1st, 1976. 4-1-1-9-7-6 adds it to 28. 2 and 8. Yeah, you saw it. 2 and 8 is number of wealth. It was incorporated January 1st, 1977. Again, 28. Who started the company? Steve Jobs. Born 224 in 1955. 224-1955. Again, 28. What do you think? That's a coincidence? What do you people fucking morons? That's the richest cash-rich company in the world. Apple. But you know what, Apple? Who invests in Apple? There's a company by the name of Vanguard. Vanguard is not worth billions. Vanguard is worth trillions. Around 9 to 11 to be exact. They're asset manager. The richest in the world. Some people would say BlackRock is, but let's remember, BlackRock is a, private, is a public company. Vanguard got stocks in it. No one has stocks in Vanguard because they're private. So Vanguard is the biggest asset manager in the world. They were founded 5-1-1975. Now, I know some of you guys are slow, so do this with me. 5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 9 plus 7 plus 5, 28. At so what, what point does this stop being a coincidence? Clearly, people in positions of power are doing something. By the way, the most valuable football franchise or most valuable sports franchise in the world not Manchester United, Dallas Cowboys, founded on the 28th. And if that still doesn't convince you, go to a Rolex store. And when you got one number in there, 28. So again, I just proved this stuff is real in finance. By the way, Wall Street was founded on the 28th day, the single biggest creator of wealth in human history. So again, it's all over the place. So we talked about terrorist attacks, we talked about finance. Where are we going to go next? Let's talk about pop culture. Let's talk about the people who are running their mouths. I grew up in the era where it was Rush Limbaugh and Howard Stern. Those were the two top guys on the radio. You had guys like Sean Hannity. I'm sure you heard of him. Yeah. Mark Levin. Let's go through the list. Rush Limbaugh and the self-proclaimed king of all radio Howard Stern, born on the 12th. Born on the same day, actually. So the top guys in their field were born on the same day for about 20 years. Born on the 12th, 1 and 2 is 3. Mark Levin, born on the 21st, 2 and 1 is 3. Sean Hannity, born on the 30th, 3 and 0 is 3. Now let's go into today's era. Ever hear some guy named Steven Crowder? Yeah. Yeah, three life path. Uh, a lot of people who have that three energy are out there. Mr. Beast, he's the top guy right now, isn't it? Number one. By far, isn't he? Yeah. On YouTube. Not even close. And Mr. Beast is a three life path. Um, a guy we know well, Circa, is a three. Uh, Sartain is a three. Uh, what's his free? Uh, Rolo is a three. So you're going to, uh, Destiny is born on the 21st or 12th. One and two is three. So you're going to see a lot of these guys in the same field running their mouths have three energy. I know I'm missing a whole bunch of guys, 
But you got to understand, I didn't know who the fuck you guys were about six months ago. I just came in this field because I already dominated numerology. So I just came in your field and started doing the same thing here. So, so let's say two parents, right? Because I want to see how genetics plays into this. And there's mm -hmm. probably people that come up with this too. Let's say two Environment parents, matters. Mother and father, let's say, for lack of, let's say they're retarded. They're mm -hmm. dumb, as, dumb mm -hmm. as hell. And they have a kid that's born on the seventh. I would say that child would have much more enhanced capabilities compared to his parents, but he probably will still have some, you know, genetic defects. I mean, listen, there's some numbers that are leaders. There's some numbers that are adaptive. There are some numbers who are comedians. The fact of the matter is this. If someone's born in uh, San Francisco, there's a good chance they're going to be a rainbow. If someone's born in uh, Mecca, there's a good chance they're going to be a Muslim. Environment matters. But here's the thing. That same three life path who's LGBT in San Francisco is going to be very talkative. He's going to be talking everything one about gay pride and all this other nonsense. The Muslim who's a three life path, he's going to be talking about Allah all the time. You understand? They're, they're born in different places. They believe in different things but they're communicating. They're doing what the energy gives them. Does that make sense? Yes. That's consistent. That's all you can ask for, brother. So 2016, that happens. That's a huge event. Mm -hmm. Is that when you start to like make some real money? Because did you bet on I, 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 Yeah, Yeah, I made a lot of money on that. Um... No, I started making real money before 216, say around 213. Because at this point in 2016, I I think that's the first time I had ever seen you on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And you probably got banned twice in that time. Well, got banned a lot of times, bro. 18 yep. times, I probably hold a record for being banned the most on Twitter. Why did they ban you that often? Uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of uh, Democrats. I'm not a fan of Black Lives Matter, not a fan of homosexuals or their wokeness. And I tend to speak out. And Twitter used to be a very, very different place before Elon Musk bought it. Um, it was so bad in 2019 when it started. I couldn't use my real name. I, I, I used to go by North American Empire. I, I literally did not use my name until Elon, Elon Musk bought the company. Now I'm, I'm like at 80K, but I mean, I got 18 accounts suspended. Some of them back 20K, 30K. Um, but a lot of these accounts uh, that got suspended, they're still not back. I'm pro I would have definitely been at 500,000 if I never got suspended on Twitter. And one of the things that I saw on Twitter, even back then, is a lot of people were repping your hashtag. Mm-hmm. When did this start? What was your plan for corralling these people together? 2011, I started GG33. The reason I did it was because the century is imprinted with cat energy, and I decided that cat energy would be the best way to spread it. Uh, this year is the year of the cat, and I did blow up this year. So it's all consistent. Started the organization, waited till a certain year, went boom. Um, I could have done this a while ago, but I knew it would really hit hard in 2023, the year of the cat. Not just because of the cat energy, but also because it's the seven universal year cycle. So that type of helps people like to think. Even the NPCs like to think this year. You know, you're really going to find out who the NPCs are next year because they're going to forget all about numerology, astrology, go to the next thing. And then they'll be back in 2025, year of the snake. Um, it is what it is. But I would probably say 2000. 15 is when I got the first suspension and I basically paid someone off to get it back on. Again, you could do stuff like that in 215. Took me a while, but you know, I needed to get it back on. And um, at that point, I knew I would have problems in the future. So I changed strategy. Instead of focusing on me, Gary, the numbers guy, let's focus on the group. So let's get this straight. First of all, you knew you were going to have problems in the future because you didn't want to compromise what you were going to say. Yes. There's a lot of people, they'll get banned and they're like, okay. ESPN uh, said 
they wanted to work with me, but I had to apologize for not supporting uh, gay marriage. I basically said this. So again, I, I'm not compromising certain values. You know me well enough by now that, to know I'm not going to do certain things. That's true. So going back to 215, I get my account back. And um, the rich people I was around back then were telling me, Gary, start focusing on yourself. Dump this GG33 stuff. Just go yourself. And I'm like, wait a second. I see where this is going. I see where the censorship is going because I'm already off Facebook and all this other shit. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to focus on the group. I'm going to build other people up. And that's exactly what I did. I literally built up every other numerologist on that numerology account. Um, it was numerology now. It's activated now, but it was deactivated for almost four years. And I built up every numerologist on that app with that account. And because when I was suspended, they would always tell people what my new account was. So within a day, I get 5,000 followers. So I did the, and I even had a website called find GG33. So whenever I got suspended, go to the website, find out what the new Twitter account was, boom. And believe me, I used to have a lot of these different phones around because I found out how Twitter works, could never use the same IP, could never use the same fucking uh, anything. So I literally had like 10 phones for a whole bunch of different accounts because I'd open a whole bunch of different accounts at the same time, prop one up with the other, expect one to be suspended, move shop over here. People think that shit's crazy, but it happened to me 18 times. Because of that happened, people in the Republican Party reached out to me and with help of how to get around Twitter. And that happened around 219, 218. So good things did come from it, which have actually helped me to this day. So again, it's always possible to turn a bad situation to a good situation. Just got to believe in this stuff. So it was the people that believed in numerology and astrology that wanted to rep you. Was there some sort of incentive? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, the incentive was, you know, they were basically knew the truth. At that point, I wasn't really paying anyone at that point. They did it because they believed in it. It was only this year I started affiliate links. I never did that before. Now, obviously, money helped it blow up, no doubt. But, you know, there's other people who fucking do a lot worse than I do when it comes to stuff like that. So my stuff's actually organic. It just has capitalism backing it up. You know, I'm not like Andrew Tate, who's going to have 50,000 people putting up seven videos a day. That's what he did to get famous. I mean, think about it. 350,000 videos a day at his peak, and he only had a couple go viral. How could you not go viral at that point? That's another thing where I saw you again is, I don't know if it was 2017, 2018, but you had beef with Andrew Tate. Yeah, you remember that. Start? You remember that, right? I remember that vividly, yeah. Bro, I was bigger than him back then. He would go after me. It started because he was mad. I gave him a reading, told him he would blow up in 2022, the year of the tiger, because he's born in 1986, the year of the tiger. I put up proof so people see it. And um, about, I don't know, six weeks after, somewhere around that area, he DM'd me and I showed people proof. And he asked me if uh, I would help him sell his pimp horse. He'll give me 50%, make 25K. I'm like, no, bro. I got fucking a bag. I mean, I'm, I'm not fucking rich as hell back then, but. I got a bag. I'm not fucking pimping horse. I said no within a, a month or two. He just fucking went off on me. He basically thought I was a soft target. He could go after. And uh, he did eventually get me suspended. But I did promise I fucking hower back at him. And uh, let's just put it this way. In 2022, when no one knew he had kids, I knew he had kids. And I went on the biggest uh, TikTok show I could find, some kids with 10 million followers. It got like 300,000 uh, views. Uh, the TikToks got 10 million views or something like that. And I basically said Andrew Tate had a whole bunch of kids with a whole bunch of different baby mamas. No one knew that at that time. But I had people inside the war room. So I leaked it. So he had to go on Aiden Ross and tell everybody because it was fucking going out so hard. 
Um, not to mention, I built a fucking Twitter following off this bitch ass. <laughs> so it is what it is. Um, afterwards, I basically said he get arrested by the end of the year. Talked to a few people in the know, figured a few things out. Saw that America was sending um, Romania Abrams tanks. Interesting how the first time Romania got Abram, Abrams tanks in the same month, Tate's uh, compound gets raided for the first time. And when they get another shipment in December of 2022, he gets arrested fully. So again, um, I don't think he's guilty of what they say he is. He's guilty of being a dumbass. <laughs> he's guilty of that. He wants to rep the Quran and then go back to Romania, a uh, 95% Christian nation. They, they looked at it like he was spitting in their face. Number two, you want to talk shit about Greta? You want to talk shit about the Rothschild's granddaughter? Send her a pizza box, which is basically means you're threatening her? You're going to get taken out within 24 hours. They should have kept their mouth shut. But when it comes down to Andrew Tate, you have to understand this. He's a hustler. He's a good salesman. I mean, no one can fucking deny that. He's one of the best salesmen of this century. But he's a con man at the end of the day. When, when it suits him to be Christian, he'll be Christian. When it suits him to be Muslim, he'll be Muslim. When it suits him to be a pimp, he'll be a pimp. He went after Sneeko for fucking hang out OnlyFans girls. This is a guy who used to fucking type on the keyboard talking to men. They're thinking they're talking to a bitch. I mean, and he had the audacity to go after someone else. It's like, are you fucking real, dude? At the end of the day... I don't have much respect for him. I respect his mouthpiece, but not him too much. Because what is he? He's a glorified pimp. He made his money being a pimp. Now he's trying to tell other people he's too good for that, trying to tell other people not to do it, but he's a glorified pimp himself. I mean, think about it. Did he make it because of his athletic you know, attributes? Yeah, he's a champion, but he didn't make any money off that. He didn't have any clout off that. Did he make money off like anything else. No, he did it off the oldest profession in the world, being a pimp. There's plenty of OnlyFans managers out there nowadays. What he's doing is not that special. This is not someone you can look up to. Now, do I agree with 70% uh, of his message? Hell yeah, fuck the government. And what do you know, I need Andrew Tate to tell me that? I mean, th I'm gonna be honest with you guys. It's offensive that he's famous. It's straight up offensive that a piece of garbage like that is famous. So, um, give me the 2025. We'll see how I fucking go out there. It's my first year out here. I got a billion views. We'll see what we do till 2025. You're talking about conspiracies a lot, or you tie them in. Which ones do you actually believe in? If I'm saying it, I believe in almost all of them. You know, I might be saying something cute about Flat Earth, but I'll let the other fucking people take care of that one. Almost everything I like, for instance, uh, John F. Kennedy, born on the 29th. He's born, he's a seven life path, born in the year of the snake. Those type of energies basically tell me he would be into numerology and astrology. Uh, what makes me know he was into numerology and astrology was the fact that he signed Executive Order 11110. Again, think about it. 1111. 110. He waited to that executive order. He signed it at 6 4 1963. 6-4-1963 as of the 29, 29 11. So he signed an executive order 11 11 on an 11 day. He's born on the 29, 29 11. And that stripped the Federal Reserve of the power to print money. He did that. What happened to him six months later? He died. He died. And Lyndon Johnson, the guy who replaced him, before the body was even cold, his first act as president, repeal executive order 11110. Give the Fed back their power. So uh, again, man, is that a conspiracy? No, that's fact. How do you deny that? You have to be an absolute fucking moron. You want more fact? Okay, John F. Kennedy born in the year of the snake, 1917. Who was his biggest enemy? CIA. CIA was founded 1947. You're the pig. Who killed his ass? CIA. George W. Bush got some fucking mobsters 
who they thought were working with the CIA, but they ended up being patsies. The CIA used mobsters as patsies to kill the fucking president. They thought they were taking the shot when an actual person within the CIA was taking the shot. Look at the video when John F. Kennedy gets shot. The Secret Service agent in his detail gets called off. And he doesn't understand what's going on. They call him off. At that time, who controlled the Secret Service? It's not true anymore, but at that time, it was run by the Treasury Department. Treasury, money, <laughs> Fed. The Fed controlled the Secret Service. And they killed him at Dallas, right by a Masonic temple. Interesting how that works. So again, you people want to say that it's a conspiracy. I, I say you're out your fucking mind. That shit's real. So do people ever come to you to engineer an outcome? So let's say someone listens to you he marries on this date and this number I have plenty of kids Someone's like hey i have plenty of kids i i'm their godfather because they fucking are conceived on the day i told them to plenty of kids out there like that what about on the birth date so let's say someone wants an 11. isn't that somewhat th something you can't really choose? why why can't you choose i did why can't you choose Oh, isn't there like a nine month cycle that has to happen? Well, well yeah, well, you, you just do the math. You know, it's going to be nine months. You know, it's a two week period between that nine month, not nine months within that two week period. Almost every, every number exists. So it can't be a natural birth. Oh, I mean, I, I never, I didn't have any natural births. I followed the Royal family. I had C-sections, mm. you know, um, I didn't force my wife to have C-sections. This is something she wanted to. But that was kind of part of the deal when you got married to me. We're going to have kids on certain days. And it's worked out great. Two healthy kids. My kid in fifth grade just got the highest IQ test in his class. So, again, it, it worked. I knew what I was doing. My other kid, um, he's born on the 28th. Listen to this. When he was one years old. I put a dower, a five, a 10, a 20, a 50, and a 100 on the table. I'm like, go pick one. He went straight for the 100. I'm <laughs> proud, proud of his son because a 28 should energetically know. Just like Elon Musk is born on the 28th. Just like six of the richest 23 men in the world are born on the 28th. And you know the thing about truth? It's passes the test of time. Who was the richest guy last decade? Bill Gates, born on the 28th. Carlos Slim had it at least one year. Mexico, born on the 28th. Oh, fuck, does a guy in Mexico fucking make that much money? Born on the 28th. I mean, if you want to keep it real, I've talked to people who are uh, the sons of people in drug cartels, born on the 28th. Is there a difference between a male number and sign and a female number and sign? Uh, I mean, yeah, well, say someone, if someone's a five life path and five is the number of good looks. Okay. Um, I don't have too many fives in me, but my wife does. So when it comes down to it, um, you would expect women and guys who have those type of energy to be attractive. The thing is, a woman who's attractive... And again, we, this goes into the environment thing, can do a lot more with good looks than the guy who's attractive. The only thing a guy who's attractive can get, you know, is probably laid a few more times than other guys. A woman who's attractive, shit, she can get billions, finds the right person. I mean, hell, uh, Jeff Bezos left his wife for some fucking broad. <laughs> she got oh, billions. Too. Yeah, older one too. She's kept her body in shape though. Yo, Jeff Bezos, if you're listening, uh, you did a lot of good things in your life, but you're born in the year of the cat and you left your wife, Mackenzie, for a cat. Excuse me, for a rooster. Cat and rooster are enemy signs, so you fell for lust, my friend. <laughs>